our New Life Oneonta Upstree Kids video Bible lesson. I'm Rocco. And I'm Christy. And she's Christy. And we're so excited that you could join us today as we go over our rules for life. Play well, finish strong. I'm really excited, guys. Uh, Miss Christy is, too. Uh, we love goofing around and having fun with you guys. You're just a big goofball. I am a big goofball. It's probably my favorite thing to do. But I just love having fun, and I love worshiping with you guys and celebrating with you guys and learning new lessons about the Bible with you guys. And that's what we're here to do today. We're here to learn all about rules for life and, and play and have fun and learn together and grow together. But as always, we're going to start off with a little bit of prayer and then a little bit of worship, and then we're going to get into our lesson for today. So, Miss Christy, why don't you pray and start us off for the day? You got it. If you guys can bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for this time that we get to spend together. We thank you for all of our friends and family and loved ones, people that we get to sit and watch these videos with and, and share the good news about you, Lord. We thank you so much that we have this opportunity and we have these wonderful children that we get to, to teach lessons to each week. And we thank you for this story that we're going to learn about today. I pray that you would place it on our hearts and in our minds and that we would think about it for the entire week and that it would really just sink in and, and become a part of us. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Now let's get up out of our seats. Let's get dancing, let's get singing, and let's worship together, and let's start the day off right. Let's do it. Woo! You never turn away, you never leave my side. And every time I call your name out just to find that you're already right here with me. Never been alone. I can trust you with my heart. This I know You are always faithful You love me from the start No matter what I'm facing I will trust you with my heart You are more than able To lead me through the dark Your love is never failing I will trust you with my heart Oh, oh, oh. I will trust you with my heart there are days when I feel I need a friend And then I hear your voice reminding me again That you're already right here with me Never been alone I can trust you with my heart Cause this I know You are always faithful You love me from the start No matter what I'm facing I will trust you with my heart Trust you with my heart No matter what may come No matter what I go through God, you are Never gonna fail me I will trust you with my heart You are always faithful You love me from the start No matter what I'm facing I will trust you with my heart You are more than able To lead me through the dark Your love is never Trust you with my heart. Oh, 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 I will trust you with my heart. Oh, 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 I will trust you with my heart. Oh, 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 I will trust you with my heart. Great job worshiping, guys. We love hearing you guys sing and dance. We love watching you guys get out of your seats and. And praise the Lord together. It's my favorite part. It's one of Miss Christie's favorite parts. It's such a good time. It's such a good time. I love dancing. 
I can't wait till we can, you know, dance together again and worship together again. And you guys can hear me sing and then you can tell me to stop singing because it's not good. How about but, I sing you dance? Well, you know what? Let's do that. Regardless of how good it sounds or how good it looks, when your heart's in the right place and you're singing to God and you're worshiping to God, that's what we want. Well, you're a better dancer than me. Okay, and that, and that's great. And I'm glad <laughs> that I'm a better dancer than you. And you're a better <laughs> singer than me. But it doesn't mean that I can't sing or won't sing because I'm always going to sing. Everything and is I'm a joyful noise worship. to the Lord. Everything is a joyful noise. He loves to hear us sing and dance and praise and and that's my favorite part about doing this with you guys as we said before our theme this month is rules for life play play well finish strong and we're going to learn all about the different rules that help us walk this life together all right we learned last week about our big word our life application for the month and that is responsibility miss christy why don't you tell us what responsibility is today so responsibility is one of my favorite favorite words because it's super important and showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you now this is kind of this is a really big thing it's a, it's a big concept it, it's a big concept it's a big word it's a big concept and it's a lot to take in so over the month we're going to be breaking it down and showing you different examples and different ways of how we can be responsible, Absolutely. how we can be responsible at home, how we can be responsible with the gift that God has given us, mm -hmm. and and how we can be responsible within our church too. Absolutely, and and part of responsibility is reading God's word and learning God's word. So why don't we take our big word for the month in responsibility and be responsible in learning God's word by memorizing this month's memory verse? Okay, and this month's memory verse says. Suppose that you can be trusted with something very little, then you can also be trusted with something very large. And that's Luke 16, 10. Luke 16, 10. And that's a great example of responsibility. God gives us, or our parents give us, or our teachers give us a, a job or responsibility. And once we show that we can be trusted with that, then we can be trusted with bigger things and eventually bigger things. And we used the example last week of maybe your chores at home are cleaning your room. And once your parents see that you can clean the room, then maybe you will be allowed to feed the pet. Right. And then maybe once you feed the pet, then you can take the pet for a walk. And each of these things is a bigger responsibility than the one before it. But we have to show that we can be trusted with the small thing mm -hmm. first before we're trusted with the bigger thing. I think a really great example of this is our daughter Gianna. Mm -hmm. She loves to help in the kitchen. Absolutely. Loves to help cook and bake and all of that stuff. But in the beginning, we couldn't let her just go and use the stove because she didn't know the rules. And she had to make sure that she was going to be safe. So little by little, she would come in, she would do the dishes, she would stir in a bowl on the counter. But now she's gotten so good and she's gotten so much better. She can use the oven and she stirs things on the stove and she uses the mixer and, and she's just done a little bit each time. And tonight she made some delicious brookies. She did. If you don't know what a brookie is, it's a brownie and a cookie and then you put them together and they're delicious. And Gianna made a delicious cookie tonight because she showed that she can be trusted with a bigger responsibility than before. All right. Uh, why don't we do a read and repeat with this with this memory verse? Because I love do doing it. read and repeat, and, and you guys can follow. Yeah, it is a little bit longer. You guys can follow home, uh, follow along at home, and repeat after us. Okay, so I'll read, and Miss Christy, you can repeat after me. Okay, you got it. Suppose you can be trusted. Suppose you can be trusted with something very little. With something very little. Then you can also be trusted. Then you can also be trusted with something very large. With something very large. All right, guys, I want you guys to be responsible and take this responsibility of learning God's word and commit that to memory. All right. And I know you guys can do it. I've seen you do it before and I have faith and, and I trust that you guys will do that at home. All right. So memorize your Bible verse this month, guys. We're going to go into our story where we're going to learn more about um, what God trusts us with. And the things that God expects from us and the things that God wants from us. And are we going to be responsible with those things? Are we going God to be responsible us? with the things that God gives us? So God gives us all types of different things in our lives. And this week's story shows what we are supposed to do with the things that God gives to us. How we're supposed to be responsible with the things that God gives to us. All right, so pay attention to the screen and let's learn about what God has for us this week. Done! Oh, here we go. 
here we go. Hi, I'm Erica. You ever play Concentration? Or some people call it Memory. My friends and I play it all the time. I'm the best at it. The object, if you don't already know the rules, is to find two cards that match. Boom! So, my friends and I have added a rule. Anytime you make a match, you get candy. Candy, 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 candy. A rule, and rules are part of life. Yes! You've got to talk about rules when you're talking about responsibility. Responsibility is showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you. Of course, the rules don't say I have to eat candy every time I get it match. So, usually, I save it for later. This is what I've won so far. I mean, what can I say? I know how to pick them. <laughs> My friends are like, you're too good at this game. Give us some candy. And I'm like, get your own. I might have a problem. No. <gasps> Today's story is one that Jesus told about a man who had a little problem. <laughs> with sharing. Who knows what that's like? <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. Mine. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. Everywhere Jesus went, large crowds followed him. Some really wanted to learn and change. Some were just curious. Others, like the religious leaders, listened to Jesus' words so they could trap him with tricky questions. But there were some people who just wanted Jesus to back them up, to tell them that their way was the right way. One of these was a man, we'll call him Ezra. Teacher, hey, teacher. Ezra's demand was loud enough that everyone stopped talking to look at him. Uh, are you gonna let me through or what? Ezra shoved through the crowd, dragging another man behind him, his brother. Teacher, you've got to tell my brother here that he has to divide the family property with me. Ezra's brother looked like he wanted to sink straight into the ground. Jesus turned to Ezra. Friend, who made me judge or umpire between you? People listen to you. I thought you could, you know, just settle this. Tell my brother I'm right. Watch out. Be on your guard against wanting to have more and more things. Life is not made up of how much a person has. That is not what I asked. Jesus didn't argue with the man. Instead, he told a story, a parable. If he had told this story today, it might sound just a little something like this. There once was a rich man whose field grew a fantastic crop of grain. Perhaps it was corn. His manager brought him the good news. Sir, we're set to bring in a bumper harvest of cobs and kernels. Yes! Go me! Oh, well, your employees did an excellent job of preparing the fields. Go me! And there was a lot of sunshine. Go me! And just the right amount of rain. Go me! Uh, yes, go you. Harvest the crop at once! Oh, well, we're working on that. There's uh, just a, a little problem. Problem? Who messed up? Fire them at once. Oh, no, 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 it's a good problem. You, you don't have enough barn space to store all your grain. Huh. huh, I'm just too successful. Go me. Well, I was thinking you could share some of the grain. Share it? Well, yes, some extra bushels for your employees, maybe give some of it away, popcorn for all the kids in town, hold a cornbread festival for everyone. But, uh, but it's all mine. Oh, yes, yes it is. 
I know. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I can store up all the extra grain for myself. Oh. See to it. I want those new barns up by the time the corn harvest is in. <sighs> yes, sir. The old barns were torn down and brand new bigger barns were built. Perfection. Is the corn harvest complete? Yes, sir. All finished. Excellent. Have the men store it all in these new barns immediately. But, but they're so tired. I said immediately. <sighs> yes, sir. At last, the rich man's entire corn crop was stored in his shiny new barns. He settled back in a comfy deck chair and surveyed his property as the sun set. Go me! Self, you've done pretty well for yourself. You got grain stored away for a lot of years to come. He popped a gourmet corn chip into his mouth. Self, take it easy. Eat, drink, and live it up. You foolish man. The rich man nearly choked on his chip. <coughs> Excuse me? The rich man looked around, but he could see no one. He was entirely alone. Oh, great. Is this supposed to be some God moment where I discover what I've been doing wrong? <laughs> That's exactly what it was. You foolish man. Tonight, I will take your life away from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Uh, could we come up with a different ending to this story? But there was no way out for the rich man. He had chosen to focus only on what he could keep for himself. Jesus wrapped up his parable by explaining, That is how it will be for whoever stores things away for themselves, but is not rich in the sight of God. We don't know how Ezra responded, but maybe, just maybe, he started worrying less about getting more of his family's stuff. Maybe he started to care a little more about sharing what he did have with his brother. Jesus told the story of a rich man. He had more than enough food for himself to eat, and he kept it all, every last grain. Don't misunderstand me. There's nothing wrong with saving. It's good to save your allowance money for that new toy you want. It's good to save candy for later instead of eating it all at once. But saving wasn't the problem with the rich man. No, his problem was his heart. He loved himself and his stuff more than he loved other people. And that's not good because people are always more important than stuff. You see, I can't say that I'm a follower of Jesus if I'm going to be selfish with the things I have. Those things don't match. It's our responsibility to share with others. And we all have something we can share. Maybe you have time to share or money or candy. You're going to have all kinds of chances in your life to share with someone who has less than you. Don't miss your chance. Here's a rule for life to remember today. Share what you have. I've got candy to share next time I see my friends. I've got clothes I don't wear anymore that I could donate. And I've got time. If anyone wants to play concentration with me later, although I warn you, I'm pretty much the best at it. <laughs> See you next time. I'll save you some candy. So in today's story, we learned about a man named Ezra who went to Jesus with a question. And to answer that question, Jesus told him a story. Which he, Jesus did a lot. Jesus loved to tell stories. He loved to use stories to explain the ideas and the thoughts and, and everything that he knew and all the wisdom he had, he liked to share in story form. So he, he tells this story of a man with lots of grain. Mm -hmm. And he had so much grain that he couldn't even fit it all into the, the barn that he used for storage. He had so much extra that it was pouring out the sides and he was instructed that he should probably give some away or maybe send some home with the workers or donate it uh, because he had so much that he had more than he could even need or more than he could even use mm -hmm. 
he didn't understand that God wants us to give to others. And he was being very selfish with what he had. But the truth is that God gives to us and expects that we are going to follow along with our responsibility. There's that big word again. Our responsibility to give back to others. So God gives us things and he wants to make sure and he wants to know that we're going to be responsible with it. So I'm sure this wasn't the first time he had a crop. I'm sure that he had many crops before that. And God probably gave him little crops here and there. And then he gave him this real big one to see if he could be trusted with it. And unfortunately, he didn't do the right thing at first. And eventually he does. But the lesson here is that God gives to us freely. He gives to us so many things. Love, compassion, hope, joy. Uh, even the material things of this earth. He gives us the bread that we need to live and and he gives us friends and family. God gives to us so abundantly. But he wants us to share that. Yes. He, that in which he gives, he wants us to share that with others. And that's our bottom line for, for this week. Share what you have. It's very simple, guys. God gives to us and he wants us to share what he gives to us with others. He doesn't want us to be selfish. And I think you guys know that. I think I think not being selfish is a pretty simple uh, idea that we all try and follow every day. But it's not just not being selfish. It's also sharing what you have, sharing what God gave you with others. And I think that's the big lesson that we can take away from today. That's our bottom line for, for week two. Share what you have. And I mean, we just did it as a church last month. We had that big gift giveaway. Absolutely. We had a whole bunch of stuff. And as a church, we got together and we shared what we have with other people so that somebody that needed something could have it. Absolutely. So bottom line, share, share what, what you, you have. have. All right. That plays perfectly. We're going to go over both of our bottom lines from last week and this week. And then I'm really excited about looking forward into next week as well. Do you guys but, remember last week? Ooh, it was a good one. It was. It's like a two-parter kind of. Do you got it? It's like it's like part one and then part two. Do you remember it? Was it love God, love others? Heck yeah, it was. Yes! <laughs> love God, love others. Two parts. And again, I love how these bottom lines, guys, just kind of flow into one another. Yeah. It's kind of my favorite thing about these bottom lines that we get to teach you like one big lesson spread out over like five weeks and they're all inter intertwined and tangled together because if we love God and we love others, we can show that we love others by sharing what we have. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yep. Love God, love others, share what you have. You want to do the Bible verse one more time? Of course, because it talks all about being responsible and, and doing the right thing. And we just learned about doing the right thing by sharing what we have. So let's do the right thing and learn our memory and verse. And learn our memory verse. Suppose you can be trusted with something very small. Then you can also be trusted with something very large. Small, large. Small, large. Near, far. far. Small, large. Suppose you can be trusted with something very small then you can also be trusted with something very large. Guys, I am challenging you this week to be trusted with memorizing this memory verse. And then once you guys do that, I know that I can trust you to memorize more and more memory verses until we have a whole year's worth of memory verses memorized. Because that's what we're here to do. We're here to learn God's word. We're here to commit it into our hearts and into our minds, learn it and take it with us and then share it with whoever we can you know when i was in school we used to have to memorize verses and then once we got really good at memorizing verses we'd have to memorize chapters that's a lot of words i mean i know i speak a lot of words but that's a lot of words <laughs> all right guys let's pray today uh let's pray for our lesson and let's pray for our week and and then we'll worship one more time and then we'll get going all right dear lord i thank you for this day and i thank you for this lesson of sharing what we have I, I, I thank you, Lord, that you are a generous God who gives to us freely. And I pray that we might be responsible with the gifts that you give to us and share them with others. God, that's our prayer this week, that you would help us to share what we have with others. I pray for each and every person that's listening today, Lord, that you would be with them and that you would give them the opportunity this week to share what they have. 
And we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Let's get up out of your sheets. Let's dance one more time. Let's worship one more time. I want to hear you from where you are. You never turn away, you never leave my side And every time I call your name out just to find That you're already right here with me Never been alone I can trust you with my heart Cause this I know You are always faithful You love me from the start No matter what I'm facing I will trust you with my heart trust you with my heart There are days when I feel I need a friend And then I hear your voice reminding me again That you're already right here with me Never been alone I can trust you with my heart Cause this I know You are always faithful You love me from the start trust you with my heart You are more than able to lead me through the dark Your love is never failing I will trust you with my heart whoa, whoa, I will trust you with my heart No matter what may come, no matter what I go through God, you are never gonna fail me I will trust you with my heart no matter what may come, no matter what I go through, God, you are Never gonna fail me, I will trust you with my heart You are always faithful, you love me from the start No matter what I'm facing, I will trust you with my heart You are more than able to lead me through the dark Your love is never failing, I will trust you with my heart you with my heart put it in the books <laughs> that's it week two rules for life play well finish strong i'm rocco and i'm christy and we're so glad that you joined us this week for another exciting round of rules for life we'll see you next time we love you.